Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, or otherwise strange content. It's very late at night, <laughs> and I cannot sleep. And I just had the urge to come in here and film a video, but I figure by the end of filming this video, I'll probably be ready to sleep, hopefully. I know a lot of you are also insomniacs right along with me, so come combat insomnia. Today, we are moving on to our third location in our trip around the world. We are arriving in France. Hello, France. I haven't talked about, nor do I think I have watched anything made in France, no French media, since we covered I Believe in Santa Claus back at Christmas time last year when me and Anton did that, and that was one of the movies of all time the video is on the channel if you'd like to go see it the french are known for being a, a place where art thrives and you guys make beautiful films artsy films that americans all lie to each other and say that we've seen and you know how i love a good beauty and the beast rendition and probably one of the most famous known as the you know grandmother of all other successful versions of the story is the 1946 french version i obviously have known about this version for a very long time but i've never sat and watched the whole thing myself so I figured we could do that together today. I found a copy on a channel called the Mysterious Domain Movie Palace. There are copies of this movie in other places on YouTube. I'm pulling from the Mysterious Domain Movie Palace simply because they have baked in English subtitles and your girl needs that because I don't speak French. I've never seen this channel before, but it seems to be an archive of a bunch of old movies. Uh, I hope it's okay that I'm uh, borrowing your upload uh, just so that I can show this movie to more people. I obviously don't know anything about the woman who runs the channel, but she seems lovely from the little bit that I saw in the beginning of the video that she uploaded where she was kind of giving some background information on the movie. She seems like a goth woman after my own heart. She seems like our people, so maybe go say hi and thank you. This is Jean Cocteau's La Belle et La Bête. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> this movie is Jean Cocteau's La Belle et La Bête. I'm sorry, I said that very wrong. That just means Beauty and the Beast in French. <laughs> oh, it's loud. I'm more awake than I was before. I always thought this movie, when I was like hearing other people talk about it and how iconic and historic it was, I always pictured it being older. It came out in 1946, but I'm I I always pictured it being like almost like of the silent movie era, <laughs> like a 20s or 30s situation. Also, disclaimer: this video is you know if you've never seen my channel before, hi. I'm not a film historian, nor am I a hyper analytical commentator. This is going to be a very casual viewing. Um, it is not going to be academic, really. So I hope that's not disappointing. I, I'm sure there's there's many other people here on the platform that can break the movie down in that way. Thankfully, there's a translation of this blurb here at the beginning. I think it's very sweet. It's a note to the audience uh, before the movie starts about childlike wonder and asking of, quote, a little of this childlike simplicity from the audience. And I don't know, that just that just feels very uh, sweet and very French, <laughs> whimsical. Oh, c'est là! Oh, geez. I heard somebody yelling at a girl that I could not see, and then I saw an arrow be shot through the air, and I was like, are they trying to kill her? <laughs> Don't hit the dog! <laughs> I'm gonna be pissed if you hit that dog with an arrow. Belle n'a rien. Belle! Toujours Belle! Belle. She's like, I don't give a shit about Belle. You almost killed my dog. The subtitles also say that she calls them hooligans. I would like to know what the translated word of hooligan is in French because I feel like French people would rather lick the sidewalk than use such a silly sounding word. <laughs> oh, I love the sass. We're only like 30 seconds in all of and this lady has called these two guys murderers like for fun because they didn't murder anybody but they almost murdered a dog but then they called her a bitch so it's like ooh, 
tea. <laughs> He's like, you're a bitch and also everybody thinks your clothes are ugly, which I think hurt her feelings more. I think she was like, yeah, I am a bitch, but don't you dare say that my clothes are ugly. <laughs> Sir? <laughs> These women are the embodiment, physical embodiment of the bourgeoisie. Le diable vous éclabousse et vous couvre de crottes. <laughs> May the devil splash you with mud and cover you with dung. Bars. <laughs> Belle, vous n'êtes pas faite pour être une servante. Belle has her version of Gaston. I believe this is what inspired all the Gastons to come. I don't know how to say his actual name in this. I'm very American. Mais nous sommes ruinés, Avenant. Il faut que je travaille. Avenant. Avenant? Avignon. Avignon. You know the drill. This guy's like, you're so pretty, let's get married. And she's like, no. Je vous arracherai de force, c'est du stupide. Laissez-moi. Nope. No means no. That's a very Gaston-y thing of you to do, sir. We don't do that. Allez, crapule. Vide les lieux. Ah! Oh! I always love a good stage punch. Mon père. She's so pretty. I mean, she's beauty. But she is literally beauty. She is grace. But the actress is beautiful. All right. So just like in other versions of the story that you might have heard before, the family's very poor. But then the dad's like, our ships have literally come in. And the wicked sisters. I keep wanting to call them stepsisters because I'm conditioned by all the other fairy tales. But they're just her sisters. They ask for really expensive things. And beauty just asks for a rose, just a flower. And they're like, our sister acts like a poor. Isn't that funny? I like how it's just like, we have to go through the woods at night. Fuck. I hate when I have to do that. It's scary. <laughs> I would also hate that. No shade. Yes, I just said no shade in a video about a movie that is historic and academic in nature. I don't apologize because that word is a borrowed word from drag culture, specifically comes from POC in the drag culture, and which has a historic and artistic and rich history all of itself. So you don't get to turn your nose up at the use of shade. Anyway, back to the movie. <laughs> the horse just went, nope, bye. La personne? I never understood this. I guess it was a culture of the time. I guess I had to be there. But he's like, I'm frightened of this castle, so I'm going to run up the stairs towards the foreboding castle with God knows who living there. Oh, this is the classic shot. The arms, the disembodied arms floating with the candelabra. Candelabras. There's many, many of them. It's just such a... I don't even know if creepy is the right word. It's just very surrealist. It's very surrealist, and it's why it's captured so many people's attention over the decades and it's just i don't know it's like it's unsettling but it's also pretty at the same time i don't i don't know what to make of that gothic i guess that's what makes it very gothic <laughs> Thank you, Disembodied Hand. A little while back, I covered the episode of Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theater that covered Beauty and the Beast, and this was clearly a heavy inspiration for them. There's many similarities. Oh god, are those living statues? I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> Beast really said don't let the door hit you in your ass on the way out, didn't he? Marco, I know that there are going to be some people that are going to be like, you're not taking this movie seriously enough. You don't appreciate the symbolism. I do. <laughs> I very much do. I feel like sometimes when we're watching old movies, we seem to give it a kind of reverence that seems very... We approach it with a stoicism, almost like the people who made it weren't feeling human beings that also found humor in their own things in their own ways almost like we think humor wasn't invented back then plus there's a million other people that can give you the academic rundown like i said but oftentimes movies that are old feel unapproachable sometimes because we take them so so seriously and it's like i don't know i'm having a lot of fun watching this movie i hope you are too <laughs> Ah, 
Hello. Look, it's the Beastie Boy. Yeah, so the, the Shelly Duvall beast design is also very similar. He's just like a little kitty cat. So you guys know the story. He's like, hey man, you stole a rose. Uh, that's punishable by death. Unless one of your daughters wants to take your place. So he's like, go home, try to get one of your kids to come back here instead of you. And if not, you got to come back in three days. And the dad's like, okay, but I'm lost. Je jure. Google Maps is a long way from being invented, so he's kind of shit out of luck right now. Oh, he gives him a magical horse to go home. <laughs> There's something so, like, beautifully dramatic about the way that he just... He's talking, he goes behind the bush, and he peeks out from behind the bush to keep yelling at him. The Beast has always been kind of a huge mood... You know, he's different from version to version, but in a lot of times, he's just such a drama queen. I love it. Beauty decides to go in his place because she feels guilt tripped because the rose was her idea. Not like she knew there was a crazy person who owned the land the rose was growing on, but you know. Hey, don't hit. Don't hit. Jesus Christ. Can I just say there's a part of me that wants to dress like this every day in my life? So Beauty rides the magical horse back to the palace. Look at the horse. He's a very good horse boy. Here Belle arrives at the famous castle. There's the shot of her running in through the hall with the candelabra hands. The music is beautiful. How did they get that shot where it looked like she was gliding? Is that just physicality on her part? La belle. Je suis la porte de votre chambre. Doors talking to her. I don't think even in the Disney version the doors talked. <laughs> When the statues move, it reminds me of Weeping Angels. I still have trauma because of that episode. Je suis votre miroir, la belle. Oh, in the magic mirror. So that's where Disney truly got the inspiration for the magic mirror. That makes sense. Insert joke about Disney being unoriginal. I don't know. You gotta admit, the 1991 Disney Beauty and the Beast is a very good rendition, though. <laughs> Oh, there's our boy. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. He's like, damn, did I kill her? No. It's gotta be a confidence breaker if, like, somebody takes a one look at you and passes out. And not in, like, a he's so pretty swoon kind of way. The way he's carrying her looks like it's really gonna do a number on her spine. I'm sorry. Things you think about when you have scoliosis. <laughs> You're gonna scare her more. Well, you were leaning right over her, like looking at her. Your noses were almost touching. Ooh, I'm getting ASMR from this. It's fascinating. This is the first time I've ever covered anything with straight up subtitles. I've I've covered foreign films and things that were dubbed over, but I've always been afraid that it would be hard to comment, I guess. I don't, I don't know exactly why I was afraid that it would be harder to cover something with the subtitles up. But it really is true that all art really transcends language. Je devine que vous faites l'impossible. Help me forget your ugliness, damn. Bars. Adieu, dog, ben. And off he goes into the mist. The sudden drops in frame of this period because they were using manual film canisters, you know, old-timey cameras. It's just so interesting. I remember seeing a showing of Nosferatu at Dragon Con a couple years back, and it almost looks like stop motion at one point because of how many frames are dropped, and it just adds to just the, how unsettling that movie is. So his hands are smoking. A new detail that I, I don't think Shelley Duvall's version 
had the smoking hands, but I could be wrong. I could just be forgetting. But I saw the smoke and my first thought was just like, eh, it's France, you know, like the, the stereotype of like French people just like all smoking all the time, but it's super fancy and pretty the way that they do it. I pictured the beast just coming around the corner being like, beauty, <laughs> what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm not gonna be loud back in France. Pourquoi êtes-vous dans ma chambre? Je voulais, j'étais, je suis venu dans votre chambre vous apporter un cadeau. He's like, I broke in to leave you something. It's like reverse stealing. She's like, damn, they do be pretty though. I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh, he's just hitting his daily water intake. He's fine. So she finds out that even though he looks scary, he's he's just a little soft boy on the inside. Soyons amis, la bête. Ne me demandez rien de plus. Oh, the music just stopped very quickly. Et vous, la bête? Que faites-vous toute la journée? He's like, I gotta go end this deer real quick. BRB. Girl, your pacing is stressing me out. Je ne peux vivre sans aller voir mon père. Je vous supplie de me le permettre. She asks to go home. He's like, you can, but you have to come back or I'll die. He's like, Has somebody else already asked you to marry him. And she's like, yeah, but I hate him. Pourquoi l'avez-vous pas épousé? Je ne voulais pas quitter mon père. She actually just says she doesn't want to leave her dad, but I think she hates him. <laughs> Well, that's terrifying. Dieu, vous avez du sang. You're covered in blood and you're on fire. I hate to think about how they practically got that shot back in the day. Probably was very not comfortable. Back at home, her dad's been sick in bed the whole time. I'm getting such deja vu because it's so similar to the Shelley Duvall version. Obviously, a version made decades after this and inspired by this, but it's just so funny because I saw that one first. She promises to come back in a week if she gets to go home, so that's what he does. Oh my god, look at that crown on her head. It's giving Princess Peach, but very fancy Princess Peach. Je vous donne la plus grande preuve de confiance qui se puisse donner au monde. He's like, here's the key to all my riches. If you don't come back, I'll just die and they'll be yours anyway. Again, such a drama queen. <laughs> oh, oh, God. That was... <laughs> <laughs> made me very uncomfortable to look at. She came through the wall. But it looked like that Barbie that I had as a kid where, like, she had a baby and the baby was, like, inside her abdomen and then it came... It was a, a weird mental image, I know. She's like, hey, Dad, I'm back. The Beast and I are cool now. Oh, vous! tranquille! plus en plus charmant! He becomes sweeter by the day. I love the sassiness. See? Not everything has to be so serious in old movies. Bien, Adelaide, allons-nous vêtir. De quoi aurions-nous l'air? I love that her sisters are always mad at her for being alive. Le tribunal d'église s'intéresserait beaucoup au phénomène de sorcellerie dont nous venons d'être témoins. Not the witchcraft accusations. L'idée de voir Belle retourner demain chez cette bête est intolérable. The Gaston type character is jealous because of course he is. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce his name and I don't want French people to be mad at me. What a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Belle, tu ne peux pas nous quitter. Tu ne peux pas partir. Her sisters decide to mess with her by being like, no, don't go, please. Look at her face. She's like, yeah, fucking right. You don't give a shit about me. I like she's crying. Score. Il faut que je vous réveille de ce cauchemar. Il faut que je vous emporte. I love how he's like, I know you think I'm a loser and a no nut <laughs> and a fucking moron. You know, but he said it in French. Poor beastie boy. Picking up that blanket while he's already in that suit covered in fur, that had to have just been very weird. It must have felt very counterintuitive to his brain. <laughs> I'm just picturing him already being like about to die from the heat and then being like, all right, pick up the blanket. And him just being like, ugh. 
The magical horse is like, I'm here. Inutile de perdre une minute. And then the guys steal their rides. Unless I'm mistaken, the Gaston character and the Beast are played by the same actor because, like, parallel symbolism. Do those words go together? I don't know. But it sounded cool. I felt smart when I said it. Oh no, she looked in the mirror and she looked old. It must be a model land mirror. I'm just kidding. Good for them for not catching the camera in that mirror shot. She lays down and then she's trying to shift back to the castle. It worked! I know you're gonna get on me for calling the beast a drama queen, but like a pretty girl left him for a week and he died. <laughs> that moment when a girl's so pretty that you die. <laughs> I guess this is the origin story for the mob song from the 1991 version, but it's a very small mob. They are an underpopulated mob. A great name for a band. The beginning of the mob song, side note, side tangent, beginning of the mob song, Thanks for the Memories by Fall Out Boy. Sounds like the same intro to my brain. I know it's not exactly the same, but like listen to them side by side and tell me they're not reminiscent of each other. His little snackle teeth. <gasps> That's beautiful. That's amazing. So, Avenant. I keep forgetting how to say his name. He gets shot by the literal goddess Diana, and she seems so unbothered while doing it. And then he turned into the beast because that's his ugliness on the inside coming out. I don't know what happened to the other dude. He just, he fucked off. He was just like, nope, I'm good. I'm all set. Oui, la bête. La bête n'est plus. And then the beast comes to life. And he looks like the Gaston guy, whose name I can't say, because he was a pretty boy. And that's the beast's goodness coming out onto the outside. See? Parallel symbolism. You know, at least once Belle looked at Gaston and was like, if I could just take your face and put it on a person who didn't piss me off. And then she was like, look at that. Thanks, magical fairies. Il vous déplaît que je ressemble à cet ami de votre frère. Resemble? You have his face now, sir. No. She's like, it's weird, but like, it's not that weird. You're fine. Nous y volerons dans les airs. Vous n'aurez pas peur. J'aime avoir peur. Avec vous. Oh, I love that line. I think it's interesting that this version of the movie always insisted that she had feelings for the other bad guy because he was indeed a bad guy. Most other versions kind of harp on the fact that she doesn't care about him because he's not a good guy. But anyway, that's the end. I hope you've enjoyed this trip down, not memory lane, this trip into film history with me and i don't even have the fandom non-specific time machine i hope you've enjoyed this more laid-back take on a movie that's been dissected over and over again and something that i was gonna say all the smart people have already talked about i'm smart just not as you know academic when it comes to this but you know what i mean i know we have a few viewers from france hello this video is dedicated to you. Thank you for your support. Um, but thank you for being here. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. I actually feel tired like I could actually go to sleep now. I'm going to try to go to sleep now. <laughs>